Hydraulic fracturing is a natural gas extraction method commonly called fracking, and it is notoriously freshwater intensive, ecologically destructive, chemically concerning, and dangerous for environmental health. Hydraulic fracturing happens throughout different shale formations across the country. One of these is the Marcellus Shale Formation that runs throughout the Appalachian region. Marcellus Shale was the third largest natural gas producer in the world in 2021. That's a lot of pressure to put on a community. And these fracking permits are all over this Marcellus Formation, which you can see in the picture on the right. And we have about 22,000 in Pennsylvania, 4,000 in Ohio, and uh, 5,400 in West Virginia. And hydraulic fracturing uses huge volumes of water, millions of gallons of water throughout its uh, processing. And that starts through five different uh, water cycle stages. And I just want you guys to think about while I'm doing this, that I'm talking about all of these stages and risks associated with all of these stages. And to look at how much water we were using, I did a water reporting analysis based off of Frack Focus, which is the National Chemical Disclosure Database for fracking wells. And I did this for Pennsylvania and found that the annual average freshwater uh, consumption used in well development has increased at a rate of 1 million additional gallons of water per each year since the reporting started being um, required in 2012. So prior to 2012, this was voluntary. And after that, we start to see in Pennsylvania a steady increase going down to where we are now at with 19 million gallons of water being consumed for each well being developed. And when I say that this water is being consumed, I mean that the withdrawn water never re-enters the ecosystem. In that water cycle study done by the EPA, they found that Marcellus operations trap 70 to 90% of water subsurface during drilling. That remaining water that comes back is called flowback, and it contains drill cuttings, hazardous and radioactive water, non-fuel gases like volatile organic carbons and radon, as well as the fuels that are then shipped out and distributed as our natural gases. But of this flow back, less than 1% of this is treated and returned to our surface water systems. And that's a problem. Freshwater is a finite resource and it doesn't come easily. So to discuss freshwater relevance and projections, we need to start with what clean water is. Clean water doesn't just happen just like that. It's actually a process of precipitation adequate rainfall falling onto naturally covered land and then uh, being filtered through natural riparian areas. And by that, these plants in this land cover is filtering the water before it enters our streams. And these units of land that we're talking about, these catchment areas are called watersheds and they're produced by elevation and slope uh, to create these uh, catchment areas. And the US Forest Service and Department of Agriculture created the Forest of Fawcett tool last year to determine what watersheds are most important for clean drinking water in the US. And they found that the watersheds in the Eastern US have the greatest importance to surface drinking water. So this map of the nation shows the watersheds and their small resolution in different colors. And blue means that it serves the most people downstream. So Pennsylvania, you can see right here, is mostly blue, we serve uh, some of the most people downstream with our water. Unfortunately, Eastern watersheds are going to face yield declines by 2090, meaning there will be less water available in these watersheds, partially due to uh, rainfall, but also just due to general climate change stressors. And that is seen with the redder watersheds being those areas that are at risk. And we've been seeing this in the Northeast since the 1980s. There has been a long-term drought affecting this region. And I wanna remind us all that climate change worsens variability of precipitation events, not just dryness. So in the Northeast, we're getting a lot of attention for the precipitation. We're seeing dramatic flooding and precipitation like our infrastructure can't normally handle. But in between those rain events, we're seeing drier and drier periods that is resulting in short-term and long-term droughts. 
These two images here are of the Northeast when I started this project in June, where we see a moderate drought covering Pennsylvania. And then the drought monitor from last week, where this drought has cleared up, we had adequate precipitation. And this would be an example of a short-term drought. The effects of short-term droughts would be declining agricultural productivity. And the effects of long-term droughts, which we have been feeling in the Northeast, are hydrologic and ecologic. Our aquifers are being more stressed or surface water systems are having less flow and the ecosystems are reflecting 